Good morning, Lily. Um, thanks for getting me your draft, especially since you are at home. Um, I'm going to read through your draft and make notations. And I'll put this recording into OneNote and put a link into the LMS. So, let's start, shall we? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's TED Talk on Veterinary Science. My name is Lily Flynn, and I hope you all enjoy the small insight into the world of veterinary science and the role it will have in the future in the community. Okay, Lily, this is a wee bit wordy, a bit long. Um, perhaps you could look at, have you considered maybe using an anecdote where you had a pet that needed looking after and then make that link to veterinary science? Because a TED Talk is more than just an expert conversation talking at somebody. It's, it's a conversation of sorts, even though your audience aren't actually answering you. You are asking them questions and you're also engaging with them on a personal level in a, almost a very friendly level. You know more than they do, but you are making them feel like they're equals with you. So it's using inclusive language. Okay? So think about that. So, carry on. Veterinary science is the practice of ensuring the health of all animals, including the treatment of injuries or diseases that affect them. Veterinary now, so where's that from? Okay, oops, that said source. Veterinary science is a female-dominated industry and traditionally involves re reactive medicine for animals. Now, all of this sounds like it's coming from somewhere, so have you actually acknowledged your sources? Okay. There are huge improvements already in the delivery of services, especially in referral medicine and surgery. We're very lucky in Brisbane to have several specialist hospitals and this specialised care will only continue into the future. So how do you think veterinary science will be valued in the future? You need to be careful here because you've used veterinary science with capital letters somewhere. Talk on veterinary science. You've got insights on veterinary science, and then you're going into small case. So you need to look at um, sustaining one or the other. Um, so how do you think veterinary science will be valued in the future? That's a question mark, don't you think? What role will veterinary science have 20 to 30 years down the road? I was interested in this, in this what? And so I embarked on a journey to understand it. Looking at current practices and conducting research of my own into where this skill will be valuable in the future. Okay, that sentence, that, that, do you think this sentence, um, the sentence works, works very well? Is it a sentence? So you've got, uh, Looking at current practices and conducting research of my own into where this skill will be valuable in the future is lacking something. So, what is it lacking? Think about what it sounds like. Think about rewording it in your head so that it com it's a complete sentence, because at the moment it's a fragment. I believe that veterinary science will continue to be a female-dominated industry into the future as it involves nurturing and hands-on practices generally suited toward more toward women. Is that not perhaps a little bit gendered? There will be a swing to move more toward preventative medicine. This is because people in this role are becoming more skilled due to more information and research being undertaken in the veterinary seal field, allowing better diagnosis and prevention of disease. I hope that in the future the industry becomes better paid for all employees. You've got lots of ideas happening here, sweetie. You need to Narrow them down a bit. Let's not worry about what you think at this point. Okay? That is irrelevant. Of interest, there are a few upcoming changes to the industry that will be beneficial. Of interest, there are a few. That sentence, need, have you reread your sentences aloud to find out if they, make, if they flow cohesively? 
One of these is the introduction of artificial intelligence. We already have an example of this in the form of laboratory equipment and digital radiography. Since digital radiography has become more affordable to the vet industry, we are now able to undertake more radiographs and the computer systems are able to perform any corrective measures to ensure a diagnostic image is presented. This not only improves safety for the animals and staff with limiting radioactive exposure, but also massively reduces waste of toxic chemicals formerly used to develop radiographs. By utilising laboratory machines that are programmed, we can perform what we... You're not a vet, so you can't be part of the we. We can perform more tests and provide more accurate results. Technology will only have a positive effect on the industry as it helps educate and assist the staff. Okay, according to who? So acknowledge your source. Maybe introduce your interviewee. Okay. Um, okay. There has been a significant change in attitude toward companion animals in Australia. Now, don't you think this this part here might be better placed further up? Because it's because of this companion animal bizzo that vets are investing more in companion animal care. So think about your placement, your um, cohesion and your structure. There has been a significant change in attitude toward companion animals in Australia. Some people are opting to have fur families instead of becoming... That needs to be corrected. Instead of becoming human parents, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Again, that's opinion. This means that pets get better attention and care. Reptiles and pocket pets have also seen an increase in popularity over the last ten years. There is a downside to this, as permits are required for most na native reptiles and the law is not always followed because it is poorly enforced. Because people are wanting to have animals in their family, there will be an increase of the amount of animals sought to non-licensed breed rights. So have you actually reread and edited this? Because it doesn't read very easily. So have a look, okay? Um, I personally... No, we don't need I personally. How about you say, this happens due to poorly educated pet shop staff that sell males and females together or from the backyard breeders that sell them on Gumtree and Facebook for their own profit. Okay, so you're thinking about the implications. I think you're now going off on a tangent. What has pet insurance, or I suppose to some extent pet insurance does relate, um... I don't know about this bit about pocket pets and native animals really is particularly essential. As people are educated on pet insurance, about, not on, pet insurance, they're becoming eager to use pet insurance, which means the animal is more likely to be presented to a clinic and receive treatment. Clients have more opportunity to educate themselves with the infinite amount of online resources. This means that there will be more of a need for trained vets. Why? Have you, have you actually... Think about... Just as Lara had with um, the art, makeup artists, there's so much happening on Google and on YouTube that maybe pet owners are uh, guilty of um, diagnosing themselves, even though they haven't got the, exp the experience or choosing to follow treatments that are promoted as being ideal treatments for domestic animals. Have a look. In the future, this industry will change and, ben and benefits the community with its new discoveries, new technology, new perspective. As we try to implement where we can and move with the times, veterinary science will most likely never become an artificial intelligence industry as it would negate the needs for vets. Okay, I don't. I think you've got too many things going on. I suggest that you go back to the task sheet and read it carefully because you need to actually make all of the points link together. You need cohesive ties. Do all of your paragraphs link back to your, the, your opening? your introduction, or the point of your speech. 
you've got some very good things in here, but you do also need to talk about the fact that you did interview um, your vet um, teacher, name her, talk about her credentials, and then use quotation marks about the things she said. There's a distinct difference between what has come out of her answers and your paragraphing. So you have to make sure that you put it into your own words if you're not going to identify it as coming from the, the interview. Make sure that you use, um, give me a reference list at the end. And think about your audience. Perhaps start with, as I said, with an anecdote about an animal that you had that needed care. Maybe give have a question or two within the piece. Think about your audience. How are you going to engage and sustain their interest? Now, your speech goes between four and six minutes, so you need to make sure that you cover not only the time, but you do so in a way that people don't feel like you've stolen five minutes of their life. Also, think about the images that you want to use in the background. So the slide that you would use. Okay, remember we don't really want too much text on it. It's got to make your point. Often humour is a good idea. So, thank you for that. And I will wish you luck. Keep up with what we're doing on our website and on Teams and OneNote. Take care of yourself, Lily. Be good. Bye.